Hey, it's your pal Mike Shea from Sly Flourish here with another video to talk about tools to help us play D&D &D online. Like many others, I've had to transition my game from playing in person to playing online. So I'm always on the lookout for tools that can help me more easily play D&D &D, uh, online. And today I'm going to talk about a tool that I've recently fallen in love with called Albear Rodeo. Uh, you can find this tool yourself at albear.rodeo. You don't need a .com at the end. .rodeo is the is the extension on the end. And uh, I, I discovered this tool a couple of months ago, I think. It's a relatively new tool. It was built during the uh, 2020 COVID pandemic and built to make it easy for us to play RPGs online. I'm talking about Albear Rodeo today because it fits a very particular need that I have, which is I want simple tools that recognize the fact that they are one part of a larger ecosystem. So Albert Rodeo just handles the virtual tabletop. It does not have rules integration. It does not have any audio, video, or chat capability. The expectation is you have all of that in another tool. And in my case, I have all of that inside Discord. Uh, if you have not seen it, I have another video in which I talk about using Discord to play D&D online. So this, the way I see it is Discord and Albert work really well hand in hand. In fact, the ecosystem that I'm using to play D&D is D&D uh, &D Beyond with all of the digital resources there, Discord for audio, video, text chat, and bot integration, Avre, the Discord bot that connects D&D Beyond with Discord, and Albert Rodeo for handling the virtual tabletop. Uh, all four of those tools together build a really nice system. It does mean you have to have a lot of tools, but each one of them are really ideal for the specific thing that they do. So why, why do I love Albert Rodeo? There's a lot of different VTT tools, a lot of different virtual tabletops out there. Roll20 is super popular, Fantasy Grounds, Foundry, Astral, a whole suite of different virtual tabletops out there. And many of them are, are beloved by their players. And one thing I want to make very clear, I'm talking about Albert Rodeo and I love Albert Rodeo. I'm not trying to convince you to switch from whatever tool you already love. If you're in love with Roll20, if you've invested in Roll20 and you have all your stuff there or Fantasy Grounds, if you bought all the books in Fantasy Grounds and you know how to use it and your players dig it, go with the gods. What's most important is that we're still playing D&D &D with our friends and family uh, in these hard times. It's real easy to get isolated when we're stuck at home and D&D &D is, is an important part of our lives. It's important for us to get together with our friends and family. So whatever tools you're using to do that is great. Uh, really, I'm, I want to talk about this tool today. If you haven't been happy with a VTT uh, or you haven't been using one and you've been kind of playing with it, I want to show what capabilities this particular virtual tabletop has uh, and, and how it fits in differently than the other tools. And, and really, it kind of hits on a few different categories. One, it's very lightweight. It just does the map. It doesn't do anything else. It's very easy to use. The 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 difficulty curve on this is very shallow. Uh, I've played with a lot of different people who have never used it before, and they were immediately in there playing with it and using it. It's, it's very easy to use. Uh, it's completely cross-platform. It's a web-based application, but it can also work on phones and tablets. And it's rare to find a virtual tabletop that can work on anything from uh, Mac or PC uh, or a phone or a tablet all in, all in one. It can do it can do all of them. Uh, it's currently free. Uh, so the, the people who have created this, they have a donate button. If you use it, I do suggest you donate to them. I'm hoping they'll set up a Patreon. I know that I will be supporting their Patreon as soon as they as soon as they put one up. Uh, but the tool itself is all is all free. And it really what I love about it is it, it does the things it needs to do and very little that it doesn't. It really just focuses on getting a map and tokens in front of the players. So this is the first page you're gonna see when you hit albear.rodeo. And it's a very simple page. One interesting thing is there's no login. It doesn't even ask for a login. There's not even a option to log in. I, for a while, I thought I had been skipping the login button. Like I was using it for a month and I thought I was skipping the login button. Turns out there isn't one. So you can either start a game or join a game. You're almost always gonna wanna start a game. And very rarely, I think, do you need to click the join game button? Because you could just pass the URL of your game to anybody. And when you hit that URL, you go right in. So I don't know why they even have a join game button. And in starting the game, you can set up a password. I don't know why you'd bother because it's not like anybody's going to try to hack your game. One important design consideration for Albert Rodeo is it expects that it's, this is a temporary session. It is not, you would not build your entire campaign in here. You probably wouldn't want to set up 15 maps and all of the tokens and get it all laid out. And I'll talk about some of the reasons why you don't want to do that. But the main thing is... I wouldn't worry about a password because it's a temporary game anyway. It's not like the world is going to come in and start screwing around with your map. So uh, I always skip the password button because why make why make life harder? And you can click on start right away. We're we're in the system. So uh, I'm going to talk about all of the features that this has. But this is the next the next page that you that you're going to see, and uh, we're going to get started right away. So the first button that you're going to want to figure out. 
uh, is this upper right hand button, which is the select map button. This is, this is the one button you're probably gonna use the most often. And we have a bunch of different default maps. These are just generic open battle maps. You can almost think of these like a Paizo flip mat, right? Uh, we're gonna grab the stone uh, map for a dungeon background. And you can see we have a grid. And uh, one other really nice feature about Albert Rodeo is it has a whole bunch of default tokens. One of the interesting things about these tokens, it has one token for every class in D&D, including the Blood Hunter and, it ha and, and the Artificer. And it has uh, one monster token for every type of creature uh, that are in the monster menu, aberrations and giants and drakes and stuff like that, you know, constructs. Uh, they all have a different token. And uh, right away, you can just grab a token and you put it on the map. If we just want to show some tokens on a map, we can do it really easily just for a quick fight. So we want to set up a quick skirmish with just the things that it has in here. We're going to have a fighter, grab the little pair of swords. Uh, we're going to have a rogue and drop the rogue in there. And we have a wizard. We'll use a little book. And we have a priest and we'll throw uh, the, or a cleric. So we have like our guys in front. We have our guys in the back. Uh, we know what token represents which class. So we're set there. And we say they're getting attacked by four spiders. So we drop four spider icons out here. All the tokens and maps and everything are all set. So uh, we say, okay, this is basically you enter a chamber, uh, four spiders attack you. The fighter can say, I want to run up and attack one of the spiders, right? And uh, they attack the spider and so on. And so, and then you handle all the mechanics outside of this. You would use you, like Discord, you could use Avre. You could just roll dice right on your desk. However you want to set up your rules. All that we're doing here is uh, working on the map. Now, uh, for the icons that are here, for all the icons and tokens that are that are inside uh, Albert Rodeo, we have a bunch of features and you get them by clicking it. The first thing we have is a label. So if you want to say, uh, we have Grand the Fighter and we have uh, Vlain uh, the Rogue, uh, Simus the Wizard, and Clara the Cleric. And you see, like, I can't really see those particularly well, right? The labels are kind of small. Uh, down in the lower left is a settings button. And in here, we can change the label size. Uh, we'll do it right there so that we can see it without any wrapping. So now we have the names of the characters right on the token. Uh, one trick that I like uh, is for the monsters, instead of putting monster names in there, you can track damage. So when the fighter hits, when Gron the fighter hits the spider and does six points of damage, uh, we can just put a six on there. And then we know how much damage has been inflicted to any of the monsters. If uh, the rogue uh, moves in the back and fires an arrow and hits it for another nine, uh, we can just quickly update the amount of damage done. And that way the players and you can track how much damage has been done to each monster just by looking at the label that's on the monster. Now, uh, another feature that it has is let's say our friend Simus here casts uh, fairy fire and catches these two spiders in the background. We can mark them with a little violet ring. And now we know which guys have been fairy fired. So in the upper right hand side of the screen, we have a list of all of the main tools that we use for a map. Uh, the little hand icon, so the, the one I showed before is the map upload one. We're gonna, we're gonna show how that works in a minute. Uh, the little hand is for you to be able to move things around, move tokens or move the map. Uh, this one is for the fog tool, for fog of war. I'm gonna show how that works in a second when we upload a custom map. Uh, there's also a draw tool. So an example is like, let's say we go back to our map here and I wanna draw a, um, a little rift that uh, cracks this room in half. Uh, there's a bunch of different little selectors for the tools up here. Uh, this one over here, this disable blending or enable blending. Blending is basically, is it semi-transparent uh, or is it completely opaque? And so I'm gonna turn uh, the blend off so that when I draw a thing and I can sort of draw a marker right on there. Uh, but actually I wanna draw using this tool and I can draw a crack uh, in the ground. And so you could say like, there's a big rift, uh, a big crack in the, in the earth. If I wanna create a dais in the back, for example, like a raised platform, uh, I can go in here, collect this square, select gray, and I can draw a dais and say like that dais in the background, there is an evil wizard on there. And we're gonna grab like this little mask icon and say that there's an evil word on a, on a dais and the dais is, is 10 feet up. You'd have to climb up to get there. So you can add some features really easily with the object with the object button. Uh, there is also a distance feature. If you're a real nitpicky war gamer type and you wanna figure out exactly how far something away is, you can draw out this little ruler and uh, draw it out. It has these other functions up here. I don't know what they do. I can't figure it out. Uh, now another really important important tool, the bottom one is a laser pointer. 
Uh, so if you want to show everybody else like which one, like let's all shoot this one. Anybody can click the laser pointer and anybody can, can draw on the screen and everybody else will be able to see it. Real handy tool for communication. One other button that can go unnoticed down here is the full screen button. Uh, if you want to go into a full screen mode so that uh, the tools are just... You know, you, you're getting a full view of the of the map on the screen. You can do that. This isn't so such a big deal when you're on a computer monitor, but if you're on a tablet or the or a phone, it can make a huge difference because those menus on the left side and the right side are much bigger when you're on a narrow display. So real handy. That that button is really handy and really important if you're playing on a mobile device. So now we're going to upload a custom map and talk about the Fog of War tool because it's a really really powerful feature that 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 I love. So we're going to click on Select Map here. And uh, the first thing I'm going to do is find a map. So I love going to Dyson Logos for a map. Uh, if you go to Dyson Logos, uh, you can Google it or DysonLogos.com. You can also find a note. Uh, you can find a link down in the notes below. And we go to Maps. Uh, this is where I find almost all of the maps that I use in my in my D&D game. There's more than 900 maps available, and they work really well in uh, Albert Rodeo. So we're going to scroll down and find a map. And we have this Overlook Cave. That's a nice sized map that kind of fits what we want. And so instead of just putting in a room for a battle, we're actually gonna put in the whole room for the dungeon that we're running at any given time. So we click on the overlook map. Uh, we're gonna click on the full resolution version. It's a great big map, it's 6,000 by 3,600. Sometimes if you get a Dyson logo map, you might need to reduce the size before you upload it to Owlbear Rodeo because they can be like 12,000 or 24,000 pixels wide. They're so big that it's gonna bog everything down if you send it. So sometimes you wanna drop to like 2,000 resolution or something like that, but 6,000 6, resolution, 6,000 pixels wide will work. So we're gonna save the image to my desktop. Now we have a local version of that image. And then we go to Albert Rodeo and we're gonna click on a new map. And you, so you click on the import map and we go to this little button in the upper right, the add map button. Uh, we navigate, it brings up a file window. You can't see that in the video, uh, but it brings up a file window. We, go, we find the overlook map and then we wait because it is a little bit of a big map. So it takes a little bit of time to upload. Uh, while we're doing this, an important consideration is all of your assets that you upload are actually stored locally. They are not stored on a server remotely. Uh, the way Albear Rodeo works is all of your tokens and all of your custom maps and all your layout and everything like that is stored in your browser's database on that on the machine that you're using. And then when you connect it with other people, you're broadcasting from your machine to their machine. It's not going up to a major cloud provider. Uh, Albear Rodeo doesn't run some huge infrastructure. They're just running the application. And then you're, you're basically loading the application in your browser and it's passing it along. That's an important consideration because it means when you uh, get a map and tokens on one machine and go to a different machine, it's not on that other machine. So you want to keep your tokens and your, your maps, uh, you want to you want to have them handy for whatever machine you're going to be using. Put them in a shared drive or something like that and then load them in your other machine. Uh, so, and then when you're prepping your game, you want to prep on the same machine you're going to be using to play. It's an important consideration. It is a limitation of Owlbear Rodeo when compared to other systems like, like Roll20. So uh, we've loaded our map. We've got the overlook uh, map here and uh, you can actually edit the map and take a look at a few things. So there's a little bit of fancy artificial intelligence in here that can detect uh, grid size automatically. Many times it works perfectly well. For Dyson, it works really, really well. Uh, for other maps, not quite as much. So uh, if it doesn't work, you're gonna have to figure out how many squares uh, you know how many how many squares across and how many squares down your map is but there's a handy tool in here that helps you align the map so you can zoom way in and there's this this big gray circle in here right and what uh, every square that's in this map is actually a 10 foot square not a five foot square so when i grab this circle you can see that i'm moving the grid around to line up and i can line the grid up manually and and then it's lined up and it's lined up for the whole rest of the map by by clicking that by clicking that button and you can sort of see uh, that it, it extends the full distance of the map. Now, you can either draw a grid or not draw a grid, depending on what you want. Uh, sometimes it's handy if the, if the map has a grid on it already that already fits a five foot per square grid, then you can turn the draw grid off and that way you don't have two grid lines sitting on your map. Uh, for this one, because the grid is 10 foot, I'm actually gonna draw the grid so it'll put five foot squares inside of my 10 foot square map. And uh, you can also uh, allow some permissions, like can other people put drawings? Can other people use tokens? If you have a bunch of immature players and you wanna turn off their ability to draw because they're drawing dick pics all over it, then um, you can turn off drawings and leave it to you. 
Uh, and same thing with tokens. If you if people aren't controlling the tokens and you're controlling it all, you can turn tokens on and off. Generally speaking, you'll just say um, they can't control the fog, but they can control drawings and tokens. So we hit save and now we've got our map and we will load it. And you, right away, we can see that we have a Dyson Logos map uh, in here. And, and you can see where the five foot, and you can see that my grid line is a little off. But generally, um, you can see that it put a five foot per square grid inside of the 10 foot square grid that the map itself has. And it lined up pretty well. So that's great. But what happens? And so what we can do, uh, we can go in here and we'll drop some tokens in. And we'll put in our fighter. You come down this, you come up the stairs into a strange ruin, right? We got our fighter, we've got our rogue, we've got our cleric, and we have our priest or our wizard. We're all set, and that's great, except the players can see the whole map. So that's no good. We want to use Fog of War. And this is what this feature that I'm about to show is what made me switch from using copy, basically copying and pasting maps into Discord to show people what they were seeing. And now I'm probably going to be using Albert Rodeo nearly all the time because you don't have to just use it for combat. You can use it for exploring a location. And the Fog of War really helps with that. So in order to use a Fog of War, you need to draw a uh, you need to draw the Fog of War around the whole thing. So first thing we do is click on the Fog of War tool over here. It has a hotkey for F if you want to be fancy. Uh, we make sure that the pen is highlighted. That is the polygon tool. Uh, we make sure the plus sign is there. That means add fog, not remove fog. And and then we're all set. And so what we're going to do is draw a polygon around the entire map. So we click in the upper left, and you can see we're drawing a little line. We're gonna draw right in the outside. Uh, you don't have to be super careful. You just wanna make sure the whole thing's covered. And the last one, you connect back to the checkbox and that drew a box around the whole thing. Now for us on the DM side, uh, we still have, we can still see the map and we can see that it's opaque. If we wanna see what it looks like from the player side, you can click this little eye picture here, this fog preview, and you get a big black box, which means they can't see anything. But their characters are there. Now we wanna show uh, what the, uh, characters can see. So we're going to zoom into this area, go back to our fog tool. And this is where it gets a little tricky. We click the minus one, which is the remove fog tool. We grab the paintbrush tool, which is actually allows us to do a, a freehand lasso. And we're going to draw around everything that they can see in the map. And now that area of the fog of war is, is open. If we want to see what that looks like, you can click the I and it shows what the players can see. And uh, so and we can see the rest of the map. They see what they're able to see. And we did it with just that the, the, the fog of war removal tool. Let's say the fighter says, okay, I go up here, I kick in the door and I wanna see what's on the other side. And we look at it. So this area here uh, above is actually a drop off. So when they kick in the door, we click on the minus, we click on the make sure the paintbrush and we're gonna draw the fog of war uh, removal tool and we make sure that they clip out the doors because they don't know what's behind the doors but they can see a lot of this area because they can uh, see see that so uh, now when the uh, when the fighter has gone into the room right they can see uh, all of the area that we've removed with our fog aware removal tool again we can click that and that's what they when they go in that's what they're able to see right and they might see some monsters. They might say there's some a couple of really big, nasty looking monsters down there, right? Uh, I don't know, war drakes or something, right? And then maybe there's some uh, evil humanoid types. Uh, you know, some some knights uh, are up here. This, I'm actually using the, the paladin tool, but whatever. So three, you know, knight cultist veterans uh, and their guard drakes are in the are in the area, and then we we run combat like we would normally, and both you and the players can zoom in, uh, and and toy around with all of that, and uh, run your combat with the fog of war. So Albert Rodeo has a whole range of awesome default tokens, and I highly recommend sticking to the default tokens so that you're not spending a lot of time finding tokens all over the place and really getting nitpicky. But if you do want to upload your own tokens, particularly for if you have uh, recurring player characters or something like that, you can go, uh, you can upload your own token. So there's a plus sign. When you scroll all the way to the bottom of the icon uh, of, the, of the, the token section, there's an edit tokens button. And we can click that. And I've gone ahead and I've actually made some tokens for my player characters for my game. So I'm going to load those in. Uh, when you click the plus button, it brings up a file 
a file selection uh, box. And I'm going to add all the character tokens that I've created for the characters in my game. Uh, and click open and you can see it adds them all in, right? So now I've got a bunch of extra tokens in here for all of the characters in my game. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna select all those tokens and then there's a little folder icon called group and I'm gonna call them characters. And now I have a essentially a grouping of all of those called characters. So that way if I, if I add a whole bunch of other things, I can go in here and type characters and I'll only get the character, uh, I'll only get the character tokens. So those are now on the roster over here. So let's say I wanna get rid of my default guys and I wanna add character icons. So now we're going to have uh, banner the Warforged and shift the um, Warlock and Chi the Artificer. So you can see how I added in, like I'm just dropping in three, three of the characters from my regular game, uh, but we're able to use those, those tokens. So if you have custom tokens that you get anywhere else, uh, I'm a huge fan of uh, printable heroes for tokens, printable heroes. Uh, they make tokens, so they make um, uh, print and play uh, paper tokens, but they also make excellent VTT tokens. You can get black and white ones for free, or if you join their Patreon, you can get uh, you can get color tokens. Those are excellent tokens as well. However, it's really easy to fall down the rabbit hole of over-customizing your tokens and trying to get all the ones that you need and making sure every monster is perfect. And that time might be better spent on other aspects of your game, like thinking about the characters' backgrounds and how you're going to integrate them with the rest of the story. So I focused on the tools that I find personally most useful for using Albert Rodeo, but it does have other tools handy that you you might that you might like for your own game. Uh, one thing is it does have a dice roller. So in the upper left hand corner is a tiny little box. If you click that, you get a dice roller. Uh, if you're going to do this, then you probably want to click the little pen icon and change your nickname from Reef Shark to Mike DM. Change. So uh, and then we'll get rid of the dice. So for example, if I need to roll a D100 and I want to share it, I make sure the little hide dice rolls is not on. And I click the D100s and I get a 71 and it shows in the left-hand side, you can see that I rolled a 71. So if you want a dice roll, you have it in there. Frankly, between Avre and other dice rolling Discord bots and rolling dice on your table and D&D Beyond having a built-in dice roller, I don't really need a dice roller. So I don't really spend much time on that. Uh, same thing like with the edit button, the edit, the, 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 edit, the change your nickname button uh, is handy if you're doing dice rolls. It's pretty much not important any other time. Uh, because you don't really, the names that are showing up on the left, you don't really use for anything else. So you don't really need it. Uh, same thing with the add party member. Uh, if you want to invite somebody, it has this whole, like you can pass this code and they can put it in the selection box or you can give them this URL. That URL that they're showing there is the same as the URL of the browser that you're in. So you could just copy the URL that's in your browser window and paste it in Discord or something like that and they can get it. So you really don't need the invite players button. Just grab the URL and, and send it and, and you've, you've sent it. Uh, there's an experimental feature to st to stream audio from your machine, from your browser to the other browsers that are connected. I wasn't able to get it to work, so I didn't really spend much time with it. Uh, there is also a timer. If you want to uh, set a timer and have everybody see that there's a countdown timer for something, there's a timer in here. Uh, it's a nice little shared interface, but again, I tend not to use it. And uh, there's also a settings, the settings button I showed earlier. It has a theme. It has the token label size, which I found uh, really handy. Clear cache, I believe, gets rid of everything that's on the current desktop. And erase all content will get rid of all of your saved maps and all of your extra tokens. So if you want to clear the slate and start over again, uh, you can you can click that erase all content button. So I hope you found this video useful. Uh, if you can't tell, I'm a huge fan of Alber Rodeo. It hits all the right checks in the right boxes for me. It's really lightweight. Uh, it's very easy to use. It only focuses on the map. There's no other added frills that are getting in the way of me just putting up a map and getting tokens on there. The default maps and tokens are really useful for improvised play. That's something that is crucial for my game. I want to be able to improvise encounters as I go. And it's just, it's just really easy to use. And, and what I really like about it is that it understands its place in the ecosystem. It knows, you, you know that you have D&D Beyond already. We have Discord. We have audio and video chat capabilities. Uh, the developers of Owlbear are not trying to replicate something that somebody has already done. It is just a really simple, straightforward, focused battle map. And uh, for that, I think it's a fantastic resource. So I hope you found this video useful. 
Uh, and please, uh, in the in the comments below, let me know how you've used it or if you like it or, or if you have alternatives. Again, I'm not trying to push one system over others. If, if you're happy with uh, Roll20, if you're happy with Fantasy Grounds or Foundry or Astral or whatever VTT you like, the most important thing is that we're still getting together with our friends and family to play D&D and share in fantastic adventures. Thank you very much.